Good morning, Vermont Street United Methodist Church kids. My name is Pastor Kathy Crozier, and I'm the new associate pastor here at Vermont Street. I'll be focusing on children and youth, which means that you guys will be my focus. I am super excited about getting to know each one of you and about being in ministry with you. Look forward to what our future may bring. I will be doing our Sunday school lessons on YouTube until we can be together again. And I hope that this helps you get to know me a little better until such time as we can be together. Pastor Patty introduced our memory verse last week. It's from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I kind of have a hard time memorizing things. I don't know about you. One of the ways that I've found helps me is to use music. So I pick a song that I already know, and then I try to fit the words of the verse to the music. So I've been playing around with that a little bit, and I've kind of got it set to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's not great, but see if you think this will work. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Doesn't quite fit, does it? But, eh. Let's give it a try. Would you try it with me? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See if you can get that to work. Maybe you can get the words to fit the tune a little better or even better, maybe you can find a tune that it does fit. If you do and you'd shoot me a text or give me a phone call, let me know and we will try and maybe a new tune next week. That verse is important though, because it reminds us that Jesus really is everything and that we need Jesus to come to the Father. Our lesson today is about obedience, about a time when Jesus was obedient. And I think obedience is kind of tricky. When I was a kid, all kinds of people wanted me to be obedient. I suppose that's true for you too. Parents probably tell you to clean your room and go to bed and take your shower. And of course, teachers want you to do your schoolwork and they want you to be quiet or they want you to raise your hand. Teachers want you to obey. And then there are other rules that we need to follow. We of course need to follow the law, but we also need to sometimes take turns. Maybe we need to stand in line. There's a lot of rules out there and a lot of chances to be obedient. But the thing is, we always have a choice to be obedient or not. My daughter turns 30 today, so it's kind of a special day for us. But a long time ago, when she was in kindergarten, she would come home from school each day and just throw a screaming fit. She would be so upset and she'd yell at me and she'd bang her fists on the, on the doors and just really carry on. And I was concerned because that wasn't really a normal thing for her to do. And I called her teacher and I said, how's Haley doing in school? And her teacher said, oh, she's great. She's my little helper. She hands out papers. She does all these wonderful things. And I said, gosh, she comes home and she just has these meltdowns. And so when Haley came home that next day, I said to her, Haley, your teacher says you're being great at school and yet you're coming home and you're just having these fits. What's going on? And she said to me, well, mommy, it's more important I be good at school than at home. She wasn't wrong. I did want her to be good at school. And if she was bad at home, well, of course, we would put up with that and, and endure it. So she wasn't wrong. We always have a choice about whether to be obedient. And of course, I wanted her to be good at home too. And, and she shaped up and she, was, she is still just a great person. But she wasn't wrong about needing to be good at school. But even more important than being good at school or for our parents is being obedient to God. That's important because God created us. God created the whole world, but God also created each individual created you, God created me, and God loves you and loves you exactly the way that you are because that's how God made you. God loves you more than anybody else. God is the ultimate source of our love. 
And God wants us to help God show how important love really is. And we can, one of the ways we can do that is by doing our very best to obey God. Jesus knew the importance of obeying God. Let me read you um, a scripture. This is from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, and it's about a time when Jesus obeyed God. We're going to start with hearing a little bit about a man named John the Baptist. Years later, John the Baptist started preaching in the desert of Judea. He said, turn back to God. The kingdom of heaven will soon be here. John was the one the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, in the desert, someone is shouting, get the road ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and he ate grasshoppers and wild honey. From Jerusalem and all Judea and from the Jordan River Valley, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins and he baptized them in the river, in that Jordan River. Many Pharisees and Sadducees also came to be baptized. But John said to them, you bunch of snakes, who warned you to run from the coming judgment? Do something to show that you really have given up your sins. And don't start telling yourselves that you belong to Abraham's family. I tell you that God can turn these stones into children for Abraham. An ax is ready to cut the trees down at the roots. Any tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into a fire. I baptize you with water so that you will give up your sins. But someone more powerful is going to come and I'm not good enough to even carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His threshing fork is in his hand and he's ready to separate the wheat from the husks. He will store the wheat in a barn and burn the husks in a fire that never goes out. Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptized by you. Why have you come to me? Jesus answered, for now, this is how it should be because we must do all that God wants us to do. We must do all that God wants us to do. So then John agreed. So Jesus was baptized. And as soon as he came out of the water, the sky opened and he saw the spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my own dear son and I am pleased with him. So that's our Bible lesson for today. It talks about John, John the Baptist, and he'd been baptizing people out in the desert in this river called the River Jordan. He was preaching and he was talking about sin and how people needed to stop sinning and they needed to turn to God. They needed to be obedient and to faithful. Being baptized was a way of showing, an outward way of showing that you were gonna change your ways and be faithful to God. So John told the people that the Savior was going to come and the Savior was going to be even greater than John. All these people thought John was the bomb and really cool. But John was like, no, no, someone's coming and he's going to be bigger and more amazing. And that person is Jesus. And he's going to be amazing because he's coming to save the whole world. He's going to come and baptize us with the Holy Spirit, which is kind of cool. See, John had the special knowledge that Jesus was the Son of God. We don't really know how he knew that because he knew that even before he was born. So obviously it came from God. But John the Baptist knew that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was coming to baptize all of us, that Jesus would live a perfect life. See, Jesus didn't really need to be baptized to show that he wouldn't sin anymore because Jesus never sinned. But Jesus was baptized because Jesus wanted to obey God. Jesus and the God the Father are always, always, always in perfect unity. But Jesus said to John, hey, I want to be baptized. This is important. This is what God says to do. 
And in doing that, he set the example for us of how to be obedient. Even when something doesn't really make sense to us, Jesus didn't need to be repentant. He didn't need to be forgiven of sins. He didn't need to be cleansed in any way. But God had told him to be baptized, and Jesus wanted to set that example for us. So Jesus does what God the Father says and, and gets baptized. And then this dove, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit, comes down and rests on him as a symbol of how much God loves Jesus and how much God loves us. Because you see, we also get that Holy Spirit to live in us and to help us to live simple, sinless lives. So do you want God to be well pleased with you? God was well pleased with Jesus. I want God to be well pleased with me, that's for sure. But none of us are without sin. The thing that we can do is realize when we've sinned and say we're sorry and then quit doing it. It doesn't do any good to say, clobber somebody with a block and then say, oh, I'm sorry, and then turn around and clobber them with something else. That's not repenting. Repenting is when you do something, you realize that it's wrong, and you say, mm, nope, I'm not gonna do that anymore. And then you don't. Sometimes that's kind of hard to do though. So we need to start with prayer. The first thing we need to do is pray. We need to ask God to help us to not sin anymore. We need to ask God to help us to do what's right. The second thing that we need to do is to go to our Bible. Reading the Bible can help us to stop sinning. God speaks to us through the word. Pastor Patty talked about that a little bit last week. God speaks to us through the word. That's why we have the Bible. It's not just a book to read. It's a book that we read so that it transforms us. I hope that you've started reading your Bible a little bit every day, or if you're not yet able to read, that you've asked somebody to read some of it to you each day. If you want to take a look at what we read today, that was from Matthew, and it was the third chapter. So maybe someone in your house could read you part of that chapter. Now, another thing that I think we can do to help us to be obedient is recognize the people who God has put in our lives to help us to be obedient. Of course, that's parents, it can be teachers, it could be coaches. Um, maybe it's like a extra thing that you do. Do you take piano lessons or gymnastics? Do you take special lessons? Doing what those folks that God has placed in our lives, doing what they say, whether it's practicing or homework or cleaning our room, doing those things helps us to be obedient to, to the people who God has an authority over us. And that will also help us to be obedient to God. Well, I hope you have a really good week. I want to close us with a little prayer and to remind us that Jesus set that example of obedience and that Jesus doesn't ask us to do anything that we can't do. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us how to be obedient and thank you for helping us to be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, friends. Look forward to next week.